Hello and welcome back. Now this is Tronal Dump and we're here to make your base great again. Well, I am here to show you the best and absolutely an amazing way to sidechain your kick and bass. These tips will help you get a much better kick and bass in a consistent way without banging your head for hours in front of the speakers. So before all that, if you don't follow the channel yet, take a minute to hit the subscribe button. And if you like this sort of content, smash the thumbs up too. I'll wait. Okay, done? Good. Let's get on with it. This is a track I started as a class for a student, so it's a few hours into the construction, nothing special. Transform life into a paradise. So what brings us here is the kick and bass, as usual, and more specifically, the bass. This is my kick and bass today, and it's layered. Sub layer. And this is the sub and the bass together. And here with the kick. Just as a reminder, looking at an oscilloscope, it's like looking at a speaker moving physically in the real world. Positive is speaker moving forward and negative is speaker moving backwards. <laughs> and also, the slew rate in electronics is defined as the change of voltage or current per unit of time. In our amps and speakers, it's kind of the time that takes to go from say 1 dB to 0 dB amplitude. In terms of the amplifier, or resting position of the actual speaker radiator. So the tip number one, this bass, as you can see on the oscilloscope, each note is going very nicely onto the other bass note. So I kind of like this. When the bass notes are too long and the cycles are not finishing where they should, the next note transient will be affected and a lot in some cases. So here the bass notes are going all into each other very nicely and with no problems really, but I will show you on another track where this will be way more apparent. As a parenthesis, here don't look at the kick and bass phase correlation. I know it's cancelling, but when the multiband process is on, it kind of gets in sync. So first of all, you have to identify the cycles within the bass notes. So this is one, two, three, and four cycles, yeah? And here, there is a little gap in the end of the note and before the next bass note starts. There should be sort of a gap there, unless, like on the previous track, where the bass notes flow to the next one. Maybe this BPM and lower key or a higher BPM on this key would work. Anyways, in this track, the timing is not quite correct, so I had to reduce the note's length to match the cycles. I want you to listen to the bass transient in this exercise. When I turn up the note length and the bass note finishes in the middle of the cycle, you'll notice how the bass kind of starts slurring the transient. Some speakers amps are better than others and will have faster slew rates and hence better handling of this. But for best translation to every system, it's better to check this first.
So I don't know if you could hear that. You need a good reference, or I mean, a good acoustic space. This is basically doing a double attack on your waveform, so it will really destroy the next note's transient. So this is really the first thing you need to do when you are making your bass line. Identify your bass line cycles and get the notes to finish in the right part of the waveform. And you just do that with note length and envelopes. Now to our second subject, sidechain. Or the ultimate sidechain, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but check the beginning of the kick on the oscilloscope. When I remove the LFO tool, bass pushes the kick to one side of the face. This is sort of how a compressor will work with a kick on sidechain input. This is the attack of the compressor and it starts compressing right after the kicks click. So you will always have a bit of this bass remnant hanging in the beginning of the kick. Some compressors will have look ahead option, but in general most will start compressing from the click. See how the first kick is just full and then the next one has a bass behind it. So that's what it's going to do. First of all, it's going to push unevenly your wave or asymmetrically, in this case downwards. But in practice, wherever the bass residue is remaining, so a positive or negative, uh, it could go anywhere. And by the way, the LFO tool oscilloscope is upside down. I don't know why, but it is. Here I have a third layer doing a click, and this is it. And those are all my layers. I have an LFO tool right now on each layer, but I will remove them for this explanation and I'll do it all on a group channel. By the way, this is a parallel compressor on a return track. I will make a base group channel and send all those layers together. And the bass group is going to go now to the kick and bass group. This is normal routing. Our bass compressor return channel also goes to the bass group. So that's all the bass direct and parallel channels summing in this bass group channel with one single LFO tool. So just chopping this end of the bass will help you get a much louder master in the end because the whole audio is balanced and symmetrical. Anyways, that is it for control. Now let's use Sooth to shape our low end. Before or after the chain is practically the same, but I will use it after LFO tool. So now I'll remove this low cut and move a band to boost sensitivity on the bottom of the spectrum where the kick and bass is most prominent and the kick might clash with the bass. I will turn on the sidechain on both places and I would use oversampling and definitely would sound better, but project is a bit too heavy to record and oversample at the same time, sorry about that, but you should try, you'll see the difference. Now I'll just connect the kick to the sidechain input. And there you go, let's see what this is doing.
for me, this is the best from both worlds. Control from LFO tool and glue effect from an actual sidechain input envelope. I tell you, because I know. <laughs> no, no, really, don't take my word for it and try it yourself. So let's recap. You want to cut your cycles to finish correctly so your bass notes are not working against the speaker's physics or slew rate. This way we get a good transient. Cut the bass on the start of the kick to get maximum amplitude when mastering and getting a symmetrical waveform. And three, shape the bass low end with Sooth. So all the control plus oversampling on Sooth, you get a much cleaner and less grainy dynamic. Anyways, that is all for now. I hope you like the show and I'm sure it's going to be very, very useful. Check out the stream and see what crazy music we come up with this time. Join Homegrown Patron for all related to this channel. And a huge, huge shout out to all my patrons. Thank you a lot for your constant support. I could not do this without you. And well, as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.